right, welcome everybody here and online to Intermediate Hebrew. Um, this class is going to cover uh, some basic grammar and syntax. Um, it, this class does assume that you already know the alphabet and the vowel sounds. Um, so if you don't know those, I'd encourage you to tune in at 2 o'clock to our uh, beginning Hebrew class. So, we'll jump right into the first part of grammar, which is the noun. Okay, in Hebrew, a noun is exactly the same as a noun in English. Okay, a person, place, or thing. Um, all nouns in Hebrew have two basic properties. Okay, the first property is called gender. The second property is called number. Gender is a property that we lack in English, and sometimes it's hard to wrap your mind around um, exactly what that means. There are two genders in Hebrew, masculine and feminine. Okay, the masculine gender is indicated by a zion, and the feminine gender is indicated by a nun. If you look up a noun in a dictionary, uh, you will find that next to it, next to the Hebrew word, is a small zion or a small nun, and that's indicating the gender of the noun, masculine or feminine. Zion, by the way, stands for zachar and nun for nekeva. Zachar means male and nekeva means female. Okay? Um, now, again, gender can be quite confusing because it's not that the word itself has a gender, okay, and it's not that the word is describing something of that gender. It's just a property that the word has. Um, if we could imagine a language in which uh, we had red words and blue words, okay, this, this, this would be an equivalent kind of thing. Um, it's just certain words are a certain way. So in a language in which you know, certain words always had to be written in red ink and certain words always had to be written in blue ink, that's kind of how you can think of gender. It's just... It's just the way it is. <laughs> a noun is, is masculine or it's feminine. Okay? And this comes into play later because there's a lot of grammatical rules that are based upon gender. Um, the second property that every noun has is number. A number is a much easier concept to grasp Okay, for an English noun, say dog, okay, English nouns have number also. The number of dog is one, okay, because the word dog means one dog. If we wish to make, change the number of dog to plural, more than one, that's the only option, singular, exactly one, or plural, more than one, we add an S, dogs. Okay, dogs means more than one dog. Very straightforward, but it's something we have to think about when we're learning another language. Okay, So, every noun is either masculine or feminine, and every noun is either singular or it is plural. Okay. Uh, and you'll notice on your vocabulary sheet, I've listed the gender of each word. Next, next to the word. Now, how can you tell whether a noun is masculine or feminine? Strictly speaking, there's not a, a definite way to tell. But 99% of the time, if you find a noun that ends in a hey, and the vowel right before the he is a comets, then this is a feminine noun. Okay? Now, not all feminine nouns end in comets he, 
But among nouns that do end in comets hey, 99% of them are feminine. So the comets hey is a really good uh, tip off that we're dealing with a feminine noun. Okay, so now how can we tell if a noun is singular or plural? Well, in English, the way to tell if a, if a noun is singular or plural, although English has several ways to make things plural, but the most common way is to add an S, to add the S suffix at the end of a noun. In Hebrew, we also add a suffix to the end of a noun to indicate that it is plural. But we have two different suffixes that we can use. We use one suffix for masculine nouns and another suffix for feminine nouns. Okay. For masculine nouns, the plural suffix is a chiric vowel, followed by a yod, followed by a final mem, okay. pronounced im. Okay. So, for a masculine noun, let's take ach, okay. ach, ach means brother, okay. ach is masculine, and it is singular, it means one brother. If we wish to say brothers, then we will add the im suffix. So the chiric goes after the last letter, followed by the yod, followed by the final mem. And this word will be pronounced achim. And achim means brothers. Okay, another example. Dalit, Gimel. The comets under the Dalit, pronounced dog. Okay, dog is fish. Okay, dog is masculine, and it is singular. Dog means one fish. We wish to speak of more than one fish, then we add the plural suffix. So chiric under the gimel, followed by a yod, followed by a final mem. The word is now pronounced dagim, fishes. Of course, in English, we can also use fish in the plural, but dog is one fish, dagim, more than one fish. Okay, ach, one brother, achim, brothers, more than one brother. Okay, are there any questions about the im suffix? Okay, all right. For feminine nouns, we use a different suffix. Okay, so for masculine nouns, we use im. For feminine nouns, the suffix is the cholam vowel, followed by tav, pronounced oat. Okay. Um, in this class, I'm always going to write a full cholam, which is means a cholam vowel including the vav. However, you will see this suffix with just a cholam vowel and no vav. It's still pronounced exactly the same, still pronounced oat, still means the same thing. Um, 
The modern convention is to always include the Vav, but that is not the ancient convention, and that is not what you will find frequently uh, in uh, ancient writings. Um, the Torah, you will find both forms, with the Vav and without the Vav, and they both mean the same thing. And they're both pronounced the same way. But I'm always going to include it for the sake of clarity. Oat. So, for a feminine noun, Aleph, final mem, with the tsera under the Aleph, pronounced aim. Okay, this means mother. Aim is mother. Okay, aim is a feminine noun, and it is singular. So if we wish to say mothers, we have to add the feminine plural suffix. So aim becomes, this is still a mem, but it cannot be a final mem any longer because it's now in the middle of this word as opposed to the end. Olam tav. Um, this word happens to also undergo a vowel change, but don't worry about that vowel change. Okay, it changes from aim to emote. Don't worry about that just yet. I will not hold it against you if you say emote. What I'm focusing on is the suffix. Okay, and these vowel changes will happen in a lot of things, and the rules on that are quite complicated, and um, I will get to those at a later date. But for right now, I want to focus on the suffix, because these two letters remain the same. Okay, aim becomes emote. That means mothers, more than one mother. Similarly, another example, shin, bait, tav, okay, shabbat, okay, shabbat is sabbath. Okay. But it's one Sabbath, Shabbat. It is a feminine noun, and it is singular. If we wish to make it plural, we have to add the feminine plural suffix. So again, cholam, followed by a tav. Now we have Shabbatot, Sabbaths. Any questions about the feminine plural suffix? No? Okay. So masculine suffix im, feminine suffix oat. Now there is um, a situation I need to address, and that is in words that end in a hey. So, for example, one word that ends in a hey is more. I should pause at this time and mention that the notes for this class are online. If you have an account at the regathering, which is free to make, you can find these notes um, at www.theregathering.com slash page slash PFT Hebrew 2. Okay, PFT Hebrew 1 is the beginning Hebrew page, and PFT Hebrew 2 is the intermediate Hebrew page. There will be links there to, um, to notes for this class, which is the exact same thing that you have physically in front of you. Um, but if you want an electronic copy, you guys can go here too. Um, but anyway, I forgot to mention that at the beginning, so I'll mention it now. OK. 
Okay, back to what I was talking about with the hay. More is a masculine Hebrew noun. More is a teacher. All right. Now, in order to make this plural, in words that end in a hay, when we add a plural suffix to it, the hay is going to disappear. Okay? So the hay will disappear, and the vowel that preceded the hay is going to be replaced by the vowel of the suffix. Okay? So more, we drop the hay, drop the segol, and add the chirik, yod, Mem, making it Morim, teachers. Okay? So it does not become Morehim, but it becomes Morim. And um, you will see this most often with feminine nouns because there are a lot of feminine nouns that end in a hey. And those will follow the same, the uh, same rule. So, um, let's see, a feminine noun. Uh, what do I have on that sheet there? Ah, yeah, Mila. Okay, so a feminine noun. Mila. Okay, Mila is a word. Okay, to make this plural, ends in a hay, so we drop the hay. and replace the comets with the vowel of the suffix. So it becomes milot, words. Okay, similarly, another feminine noun Baracha, okay, Baracha is a blessing, Baracha is a feminine noun, okay, the comet's hay ending is a giveaway that it's a feminine noun. In order to make it plural, we drop the hay, replace the comets. and add our feminine plural suffix. So baracha becomes barachot, blessings. Okay. So any questions about dropping the hay? Yes, yes, um, <clears throat> yes, Shavuot, uh, the singular is uh, Shavua, which is a week, Shavuot is weeks, which is why it is called the Feast of Weeks. Um, but yes, yes, Shavuot is an example of that. Um, now, uh, I will point out that there are some words that end in im or ot that are not plural. 
Okay, that's simply how the word is spelled. Okay, so there are a few examples of that. One, remember, ach is brother. Okay, achot. Achot is not female, you know, feminine brothers. Achot means sister, but it means just one sister. Okay. If you wish to make achot plural, you'll add the feminine suffix to it, and it will become achotot. Okay, so it looks like a plural word, but it is in fact a singular word. Okay, how so? Mm. If you're lost, somebody online is too, so by all means ask. Mm. Mm. Are there exceptions on the, the male? Yes, there are many, many exceptions um, for Eam. Um, and some of them are very uh, noticeable exceptions. For example, the word Elohim, which means God, this is a word that actually can be singular or plural, depending on the context in which it is used. Okay? Notice it has the im ending, which seems to indicate a plural masculine noun. Um, and sometimes it does. Sometimes it does mean gods. Okay. But when it's referring to Yahweh, it is in fact singular. And we know this because um, because when it is used referring to the God of Israel, the words that are attached to it are in the singular form. So um, in Hebrew, if you have a, a singular noun, a, or a singular subject of a sentence, then whatever verb that noun is performing okay, has to be in the singular form. Verbs have different forms, singular and plural as well. And so um, whenever it's referring to the God of Israel, the verbs attached to it are in the singular form, so that's how we know it has to be a singular noun regardless of what the ending looks like. Um, but there are other cases when it's referring to the gods of other nations when it is in fact used in a plural sense. And sometimes it's used in a singular sense referring to the god, to a god of another nation. Okay, so this is a word that, that has some versatility. Um, but it, just because it ends in im doesn't necessarily make it plural. Um, another word that's that way is panim okay panim means face okay now it ends in im but it doesn't it doesn't have to mean faces it can mean just one face okay and it's used in that sense uh, very frequently it can mean, again, it could mean faces, but context tells you which one, which one it means. But in the singular, it still remains panim. So yes, the, oftentimes the im or ot ending tells you that we have a plural word, but there are exceptions, and these are some of them. Um, another one, Another really common one is Mayim, which means water. Now, technically, Mayim does not have the plural ending on it because the Acheric is underneath the Yod instead of in front of it. Um, but it still kind of looks, you know, it ends in Yod Mem, so it still kind of looks like a plural ending, but it isn't. Um, Mayim means water. water in a singular sense. Um, really, when it's used in a singular sense, it means a body of water. 
but it can mean water as a liquid too. Okay, so there are, these endings do have other uses than other than plurality, but that is their primary use is to indicate that a noun is in fact plural. But there's not a word for water that lacks the yod mem ending. Okay, so it's not, in whatever sense you mean water, you'll say mayim. <laughs> and um, uh, Elohim actually does, El is, a, is a, a definitely a singular form, and sometimes you'll see that form, um, but Elohim doesn't necessarily mean that you're using it in the plural sense. Um, panim is almost always Panim. Um, so, but yes, there are, there are words that end, end in those letters but aren't necessarily plural, and those are the main ones. There are, there are a few others too. But more often than not, when you see that ending, you know you're dealing with a plural noun. Okay, so are there any, any other questions about, uh, about that? Okay, well there are irregular plural forms as well. And I don't want to saturate you with those just yet, but um, sometimes words don't follow the rules. <laughs> so one common exception is Av, which is father. Now Av is a masculine noun. So we would expect the plural form to be avim, okay? If we want to say fathers, we would expect that we would say avim. We would add the chirik yod mem. But in fact, av has an irregular plural form. Even though it is masculine, it takes ot and it is made plural. Okay, so this is a very noteworthy exception. Um, av is father, avot is fathers, and we would think it would be avim. Okay, so that's one irregularity that you can find. Most of the time you won't find these, that's why they are exceptions, why they are irregularities. Um, I will point out the more common ones as we run across them. Another thing that can happen when a word is made plural is sometimes letters can appear or disappear. So, um, for example, the word bot. Okay, bot is a feminine noun, and it means daughter. Okay, so being a feminine noun, we would expect that the plural form, to say daughters, would be batot. Okay, but bot has an unusual exception which is that when it's made plural, it becomes banot, okay? That tab disappears and is replaced by a nun. Again, these are irregular forms, they are exceptions. There's no rule that tells you that this is gonna happen. It's just something that has to be memorized in relation to the specific word. To say, but bot is daughter, daughters is banot. Okay, so again, I will point these out as we run across them. I don't want to overload you with them right now um, because, in general, you're not going to find these things. They are exceptions. Okay, im and ot are going to be the rule of thumb for most Hebrew words. Okay. 
So are there any comments or questions concerning that? Okay. Um, well, we want to run over a few more examples. Maybe I'll let you guys try to figure one out up here. Okay. So let's take a take a masculine noun. Um, how about? Um, How about Na'ar? Okay. Na'ar is a youth. You might even think of it as a teenager. Okay, it's a young man. Okay, Na'ar is a masculine noun. Right? It's so it's singular. So if we wish to say youths or young men, what, what would we do to na'ar to make it plural? Add the im. Right. So we'd add chirik, yod, mem, na'arim to make youths or young men. And actually this, this would also undergo a vowel change, but don't worry about that. That's the main part, is the suffix. Okay, how about its counterpart? Na'ara, which is a young woman. Okay, this is a feminine noun. So, how would we say young women? Add the oat. Right, add the oat. Is there anything we have to do besides adding the oat? Can we just add the oat on the end? Remember, this word ends in a hey. So it would not become na'arahot. The hay would be dropped, and the comets would be dropped. And we would wind up with na'arot. Young women. Okay? How about Torah? Torah is law. It's feminine and it's singular. So what if we wish to say laws? Drop the hay, that's right. And add the oat. And add oat. So Torah, law, Torot, laws. Okay. Um, about... Safer. Safer is a book. It is masculine. It's a masculine noun. So how would we go about making safer plural? Mm -hmm. Adding the im. Adding im. Right, and this does undergo a vowel change, but again, I'm worried more about the suffix. 
Okay, sefarim, books. Okay, so for masculine nouns, add im to make them plural. For feminine nouns, add ot to make them plural. And for any noun that ends in a he, drop the he before adding the plural suffix. Okay. So are there any... Any questions about this or about anything remotely related? <laughs> All right. Well, um, I guess we'll pick it up next week then. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next week. Shalom. <laughs>